everybody. Um, I thought I was done with my slab video and then I realized I didn't run any water lines. Uh, we've got an island sink over here and there's no way to get to an island sink except for coming up under the slab. There's no pillars or columns, there's no walls to come through, uh, so we have to run it through the slab. Now, some things to remember about the slab. Uh, we don't want any fittings. We want to use this rolled PEX because if we put fittings on it, for one, we're going to have to sleeve the whole line to protect that fitting, um, and you're going to have to put a test on it. If you do, if you do it with fittings, you have to test it with air pressure, and uh, that's just an extra step. So we're going to run it out of a roll PEX, which is a constant feed, no fittings in the slab. Uh, so some things you're going to need here. You're going to need a sleeve. Now remember, it's two pipe sizes bigger. We're going to have a three-quarter line coming in. So if you think three-quarter, well, one inch is the next one, and then an inch and a quarter is the next one. Well, we don't really use a whole lot of inch and a quarter, so we're going to go with two-inch pipe to do our sleeving. Now, that's when you're going horizontal through the slab. Now, if you're going vertical, you don't want the concrete touching this PEX because it can eat through it. So we're going to use this thin plastic stuff, and this is rated uh, for contact with the concrete. Now you don't have to sleeve the whole thing, you only have to sleeve it where it's going to be in, con in contact with that concrete. Now let me show you one of the problems when dealing with rolled pegs. It's got a little bit of a memory to it. Gonna want to do this number on you. And you're gonna have to sit here and try to straighten it out. You can't leave it all coiled up like that. The half is, inch isn't so bad. You can kind of bend it and get some flex out of it and kind of get it straightened on you. Uh, the three quarter is gonna give you a little bit more difficulty, but we're only gonna have a few feet of that because we're just bringing that into a place. Uh, generally, you want it near where your main shutoff valve is in the garage or located near the heaters where you want to come in. Because once you leave the heater, you want to run hot and cold together uh, across the house. But in this situation, that island sink is the only thing we cannot get going through the roof or through a wall. So uh, let's get started. I had to get my shovel out here and clean up my ditch a little bit. This ditch has been open for about a week and a half. We've had some rain, uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, when you're doing a slab, you pretty much want to bed it that day, cover it up if you can, but you can't cover it until you pass inspection. Uh, but this is our entry. Um, most of the time when you're doing a slab, the, the way the neighborhood's laid out, you're going to have the sewer on one side of the house, and you're going to have the water on the other side of the house. But pay attention to when, you, when you're doing it, because sometimes they put the water meter and the sewer tap on the same side, so you're probably going to bring your main in down on that side. You want to keep it on the same side because you don't want to go under driveways uh, and you want to keep your pipes as short as you can. So this is a drop for our upstairs. Um, this one's actually in a 2x6 wall according to our plans but sometimes your drop might be in a 2x4 uh, wall. So when you're coming up with your water lines you want to be on either side. Remember this is that garage wall our water heater is probably going to sit right here. We typically use the tankless external heaters, so it's going to be sitting over here, and then in the garage we're going to have a main shutoff. So this is a good place to bring in that entry, uh, and then we can feed the water heater and the rest of the house. Um, so what you're going to need first, uh, well you're going to cut your sleeve, and then uh, on this, when you, whenever you're doing a hard sleeve, you're still going to have to use this plastic uh, little thin wall sleeving because on a hard sleeve they're going to want you to spray foam it on either end just like you do on the sewer line uh, and that's to prevent water and stuff from getting in. You don't want any kind of adhesive touching your pecs. It'll void the warranty on it and they say it'll eat holes in it so uh, any kind of tape, glue, uh, anything like that, that spray foam don't want that in direct contact with uh, your pecs. So 
So on this, we have to do both. come to tie in the water line, they're going to snip that off and that piece is going to get chunked. So don't worry about getting tape on that. So we're going to go down under our form board, up and get our sleeve right down in here. Hold on. Pressurize it. Um, you're gonna have to cap it. Well, I needed a little more tape than that, didn't I? tape to touch this blue sleeve because this blue sleeve, sleeve is there to protect it from the concrete and from any kind of heat that's getting on it. Well that's basically your entry. Now if we didn't have uh, an island sink, and it is a little warm out here today, uh, if we didn't have that island sink we'd pretty much be done at this point. Uh, you just want to make sure that's in that wall going this way. Now we got to get our hot and cold to our island sink. We're going to come off this same stub out down our ditch line and bring it up by where our island sink is. It's the only fixture we have to do this for because it's the only one we can't access through the ceiling, through the walls, or a column or something like that. So pretty much you get your half inch out, get your sleeve, Tape on the ends just to keep dirt and stuff out of it. But we're gonna tape our half inch right here. And then you're gonna watch me fight with uh, some rolled pegs. difficult this could be, but you're going to want to roll this out in your ditch. We'll straighten it up in a little bit.
Now you're gonna bed this water line down just like you did the pipe. You don't want it moving around. Although, with this, you're not worried about gravity because water lines are pressurized. It'll go up, down, sideways, all over the place. Uh, you're not relying on gravity to bring it to you. So, I'm gonna go ahead and run uh, my red and then we'll tape this thing off and we'll be done with it. It's pretty much gonna be the same thing on this end. Um, it really helps if you got somebody helping you with this stuff because it's got this memory to it and it always wants to curl back up uh, until it gets laid out and get a little bit of dirt on it. Uh, but and this is the point when a helper could be, he could be bedding this down, cleaning up trash and stuff like that, making everybody's life a little bit easier. Uh, but same thing here. Can you see why you wouldn't want to use roll pecs on a rough end when you're going straight through walls and stuff? Got a bunch of holes drilled in studs and you're trying to push that stuff through a straight wall. Um, it's not fun. I mean, it can be done. And if you're using some kind of manifold system, they're going to want you to use your old pecs. Um, you're just going to have to fight with it. Manifold systems are best for uh, in crawl spaces and things like that. Now, if you did put a fitting in your line here, say you're using straight pieces and you were forced to use a fitting, um, you're going to have to sleeve the whole thing. That's pretty much it. Um, that's the only water lines we got to run on this one because uh, of the island sink here. But just remember, you got to sleeve it where it touches that concrete. You don't want anything touching this stuff, and you don't want to get primer on this, that purple primer that you use for the PVC, uh, because they say that'll eat through it too. And I know it'll eat through the poly fittings. Um, but that's it. You bed it down, you finish your test. You don't really have to do anything with these unless you had a fitting on it. Then you got to sleeve the whole thing and you got to put a pressure test on it. Um, that's just one more thing. And a lot of times your slab people aren't going to be running around with a compressor because they don't need it. But that's it for your water lines. Uh, thanks for watching.